<coughs> Welcome back to part two of uh, IP addressing for CCNAs. Uh, in part one, we looked at uh, the format of IP addresses. What we'd like to look at today is how the computers tell the difference between class A, class B, class D, C, and so on addresses. Uh, so let's start straight away. It's all very well saying that we're going to have a class A address and the first eight bits are going to be considered network and the last 24 bits are host. But how do we tell a computer or a router or a PC or whatever uh, how, where to draw that network host line? Um, so what was decided to do was to have the most significant bits tell the computer uh, whether it's a class A, class B or class C address. So what they decided to do was to say, OK, if there is a zero in the very first bit possession, position, so as the computer reads the address, the very first uh, bit is a zero, the computer can say, aha, I get this. This is a class A address. Therefore, the eight, first eight bits should be considered network, and the last 24 bits should be considered host. So as it reads the address, it sees the first bit. It sees it set to a zero. It says class A address. Terrific. Let's carry that on for a class B. OK, how are we going to tell a computer that this is a class B address? Well, we can't put a zero in the first bit position, because if we do, that means it's a class A. So we're going to have to set the first bit to a 1. It's the other, only other option we've got. And we'll set the second bit to a zero. And therefore, if the first two bits are set to a 1 followed by a zero, then the computer can read those bits and say, OK, I get this. This is a class B address. Therefore, the first 16 bits should be considered as a network, and the last 16 bits should be considered as host. Let's follow that along then for a class C. We can't put a, uh, a zero in the first bit position, because that means it's a class A. We can't put a zero in the second bit position, because that means it's a class B. So we have to put the zero in the third bit position. So if the first three bits are set 110 with a zero in the third bit position, that means it's a class C address, 24 bits network, 8 bits host. And I guess you can imagine what we do for a class D. A class D, a multicast address, is essentially the zero in the fourth bit position, and so on. So if we are forced to put a zero in the first bit position for a class A, let's have a look at the possible range of, uh, or ranges of networks that we've got available to us. We can go from all zeros in the first eight bits to a zero followed by all ones. We can't do anything about the first zero that, set, that says that this is a class A. And if we now convert those into decimal, you now see that we've got a range of network addresses from zero decimal up to 127 decimal. In other words, we've lost a whole bunch of our network addresses. We've lost 128 of our network addresses. So we've only got 128 left from 0 to 127. However, we're going to reserve a couple of those. We're going to reserve the first one with a 0 in the first uh, all, all, all eight bits set to 0. And we're going to reserve that uh, for future use. In actual fact, in the original days, that was the broadcast address. An address, uh, anything sent to 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 was sent to the broadcast address in IP. We're also going to reserve the last one. That's 0 followed by 7 ones. That's 127 decimal. We're going to use that as a test address or loopback address. You may well know that if you uh, ping or, or test an address like this is 127.0.0.1, you're actually pinging yourself. So you're testing your own local protocol stack. What that means is, with those two taken away, we have the available range on the class A, uh, range of addresses, of from 1 to 126. So we've got 126 class A networks, but that's helpful to us. It means that whenever you see an IP address, which starts from anywhere between 1 and 126, it's a class A address. And that means that the first eight bits are network, and all the rest of the address is host. OK, how about class B then? Well, remember, with a class B, the first two bits are set in stone. In other words, the first bit has to be a 1, the second bit a 0. So let's do the same thing with the class B address. First octet again ranges from 1, 0, followed by 6 zeros. In other words, convert that into decimal, we get a number like 128. And it ranges right up to 1, 0, followed by 6 ones. So everything in between is an available class B address. And if we convert those into decimal, you see we get a range of 128 to 191 decimal. So again, that helps us because it means that when we look at an IP address and the first octet is set anywhere between 128 and 191, we look at a class B address and that means that the first 16 bits should be considered the piece of wire 
and the last 16 bits are considered host space. Okay, same thing with the class C. Remember this time, the first three bits are set in stone. 110, we can't do anything about that. So that gives us a possible range of 110 followed by five zeros, all the way up to 110 followed by five ones. Convert that back into decimal, we get a range from 192 to 223. Just one more, we'll do a class D address. Class D address, the first four bits are set to one, and the fifth bit is set to zero. And that gives us possible ranges, sorry, first three bits are set to one, and the fourth bit is set to zero. So that gives us a possible range of 1110 followed by four zeros, all the way up to 1110 followed by four ones. And if we convert those into decimal, you can see that the possible ranges of class D addresses, multicast addresses, are from 224 up to 239. So this is helpful to us. It means that whenever we see an address, an IP address, you can look at the first number, the first octet, and tell whether it's a class A, class B, class C, or class D address. Okay, so let's just pull all that together. Um, what we're gonna do is uh, take a little network here. We've got a couple of bits of wire, a couple of ethernet uh, segments, and we're gonna connect them via a router. And we'll put an IP address on each side of the router. On the left-hand side, we're gonna put an address of 192.168.1.1, and on the right-hand side, we're going to put an address of 10.1.1.1. Um, the router will look at those addresses, look at the most significant bits, look at what we consider to be the 192 portion of the address. It sees 110 and says, aha, I get this class C address. Therefore, the first three octets, the 192.168.1.0 part of the address is the network, and the rest is host space. On the other side of the uh, other side of the router, on Ethernet one there, it looks at the address. It sees the first bit set to zero. Says, "Okay, I get this. This is a class A address. Therefore, the first eight bits should be considered network, and the last 24 bits should be considered host." So what it puts in its routing table is this. It says, okay, I have two networks connected to me. Remember, routers are only interested in the wires, not interested in hosts sitting on those wires. So the router says, okay, I get this. I've got a class C address, 192.168.1.0 on Ethernet 0, and I've got a class A address, 10.0.0.0 on Ethernet 1. Now, if we try pinging between the two networks from one of the hosts to another, it all works. Okay, that's the uh, end of part two. Um, Part three comes next, subnetting. We'll have a look at how subnets work. Uh, stay with us, log into part three.